Ugh. the worst movies of 2021. So I keep looking off screen because of my laptop there. That's where my notes are. I don't have any handwritten notes on a piece of paper. They're all on my fucking computer. So the worst. So <laughs> I have 13. Like, I, there, there's a shit ton of bad movies that came out in 2021. So number 13, Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. <sighs> like, Raccoon City, Resident Evil, I can't talk, fuck. Resident Evil has so much potential, but they just fucking blew it. I don't know, piss me off. Like, all I want is a movie in the mansion. Just a 90-minute movie, or a two-hour movie, whatever the fuck you want to do. Just a 90-minute, two-hour movie in the mansion. That's it. They're just going through puzzles, a little jump scares here and there. Just fun shit like that. But that's not what we fucking got. Number 12, Halloween Kills. <sighs> this definitely killed the appetite for the Halloween movies. Goodness, just absolute trash this was really disappointing but I saw it in a full theater every single seat was bought out and it was a fun crowd movie like the crowd was really in on it and the ending song Hunter's Moon by Ghost is definitely badass so that's probably the highlight of the movie and there's a few little good zing and zangs here what I mean by that is like the gotcha that Karen does at the end was fun to bring that back but other than that yeah just a disappointing movie number 11 America the motion picture just because you can do adult animated comedies doesn't mean you should this one just pushed it way too hard and just overly gross and overly annoying for no reason just utter trash number 10 the hitman's bodyguards wife an unnecessary title for an unnecessary movie the action was bland the acting was bland the villains were bland the only thing I will say is the twist or the little stinger at the end that Selma Hayek and Samuel Jackson adopt Ryan Reynolds I would just like to see that play out if they ever make a third but hopefully they don't number nine spiral so Chris Rock was pushing the fuck out of this movie and he is the best part of this movie but it's not a good movie at all and that's what's really disappointing because you can see all the potential in this movie but it's just doesn't really do anything it's just trashy number eight black widow is garbage unnecessary for a character who didn't fucking need a background really i was fine with not knowing a whole lot or just what she said in passing of you know age of ultron but yeah it's just boring boring like after endgame it's just i don't care anymore with marvel like it has to be a movie that's just really i'm not gonna say good but a character i care about or else i'm just gonna wait till it's on streaming and then watch it so number seven malignant directed by james wan this movie was fucking weird as shit i kind of like the balls of James Wan, where he just made a movie that is just beyond incompatible thought. It's just weird as shit, and he's doing absolutely what he wants and how he wants to do it. So respect that aspect of it, but overall, yeah, the movie's just kind of trash. Uh, number six, The Protégé. Yeah, directed by Martin Campbell. Like, what the fuck happened, dude? So if this movie ended differently, if, it, if you change, like, the last 15 minutes... I think it'd be a way better movie as it is now. It's just trashy. Number five, Army of the Dead. This is one of my most anticipated movies because the trailer was fucking awesome and it completely shit the bed to one of the most cliched aliens knockoffs I've seen. Number four, Mortal Kombat. <sighs> this is pointing fuck, dude. They don't use the music. The kills aren't that good they do do some of the fatalities from the game so don't be jumping at me too insane uh the sub-zero versus mortal uh, versus uh, <laughs> scorpion fight at the end was the highlight of the movie other than that it's just trash N number three snake eyes trash it's honestly if you think about it it's not that hard to make a snake eyes movie just a movie with Snake Eyes. You don't even have to do a whole origin or anything. And just the inconsistencies in the movie was just very annoying to me. 
and just overall disappointing movie and the fact that it was PG-13 I mean I understand like G.I. Joe is marketed a lot to kids but all the fans of this movie are like mid middle-aged men or guys who like had older siblings or parents who were into G.I. Joe they're not gonna be like 13 or 14 year old kids so the fact that you know they didn't push the violence as much as they should have just was disappointing and it just kind of tainted G.I. Joe even more than what it already is uh, number two the Kingsman yeah this is another movie that just shit the bed so yeah Matthew Vaughn hit it out of the fucking park with the first Kingsman and now you got this prequel which the trailer again fucking good and then just shit the bed with the like actual consistency of the movie of just this choppy and shakiness and just overall disappointingness it's just sad number one worst movie of 2021 Ghostbusters Afterlife just spitting in the face of fans so it's really just a backtracking of how they make uh, Egon a terrible father and just all that shit like that, man. I don't think it's a bad idea to reboot Ghostbusters, you know. Like, if it was their protege, if it was, like, each of the original members' protégés that, you know, have to combine and make a team and whatnot, that's fine. But they just do the first one over again with Zool and everything, and it's just very repetitive and the jokes aren't funny, and it's like a very emotional movie, and it's like Ghostbusters is a comedy, a horror comedy, so I don't get what's going on with that. But yeah, that's it.